In this video, we're going to discuss replication at the ends of DNA for eukaryotes. In eukaryotes, there is what is called the N replication problem. And this is best understood by taking a look at this diagram. As you recall, during DNA replication, synthesis occurs at the leading strand and the lagging strand. In the leading strand, nucleotides are added continuously by DNA polymerase, and that strand is completely synthesized. In the lagging strand, the DNA is replicated in fragments, that since the lagging strand is from the 3' prime to 5' prime direction, and DNA polymerase can only add nucleotides in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, there are multiple RNA primers that are required, and from the RNA primers, DNA polymerase can add nucleotides. And this results in many fragments called the Okazaki fragments. Since the RNA primers are made of RNA, they have to be removed and replaced with DNA. This is done with a different DNA polymerase. This different DNA polymerase can only function if, before the RNA, there is another piece of DNA, which is fine for all the Okazaki fragments except the last one. So in the last Okazaki fragment, that RNA primer does not have DNA before it. There is not a 3' prime hydroxyl group for DNA polymerase to work off of, so that RNA primer cannot be replaced with DNA. And since RNA is less stable than DNA, that RNA will just degrade and we're left with this overhang where the lagging strand failed to fully replicate DNA. Now, this is a problem because the overhang, if nothing is done, it will just degrade and then the linear chromosome will become shorter by a number of base pairs. Now, this of course is going to be a bad thing because if this happens every time DNA replication occurs, then the genome is just going to get shorter and shorter and shorter, and soon organisms are going to start losing genes. Now, eukaryotes do have some method of dealing with this, and that is at the ends of chromosomes, eukaryotes have a repeating nucleotide sequence called telomeres. So essentially at the ends, you have this repeating sequence of nucleotides. These telomeres do not code for any protein products, but they are important because they protect the chromosome from degradation at the ends. Now, in eukaryotes, there is a telomerase enzyme that can help to extend the length of the telomeres, and this is what prevents the chromosomes from getting shorter during every round of DNA replication. The way telomerase works can be shown in this diagram. Telomerase is what is called an RNA-dependent DNA polymerase. That means using an RNA template, it's able to synthesize DNA. And since it's synthesizing DNA from RNA, it's also considered a reverse transcriptase. So as you can see, what's happening in this diagram is we have the overhang because the RNA primer just degrades away and DNA polymerase is unable to fully replicate the lagging strand. So what the telomerase is going to do is it's going to bind to that overhang and that overhang uh, can then be extended using the RNA sequence in telomerase. So what happens is that overhang actually gets extended and made longer. And since it's been extended and made longer, now it's long enough that another primer can be added by DNA primase, and then DNA polymerase can extend that to the rest of the lagging strand, and then that can be linked by DNA ligase. So essentially, telomerase allows the telomere to be extended, which helps to resolve this end replication problem. All right.